I don't believe that the Rainbow Nation project is dead. I believe it's limping. Oh, What's yeah, important yeah. is that mm. as the nation, we need to come together and say, yes, fine, this is where we messed up. How can we work Definitely. together moving forward? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's Accountability. Powerful, man. Powerful. Just saying, this is what we messed up at. Right. That would heal a lot. What's good, y'all? It's the Dumashats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we're back with another American Reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Yeah. It's my country. That's fine. It's not yours. It's, it's not, not yours. This is not the place. This is not the place. Sir? It's, it's my country. Yes, sir? Did he just walk up on a woman? Did he just walk up on a woman? Yo. Yo, he just pressed. Is that how the Native Americans feel? I don't see why not. I mean, South Africa. I look at South Africa as being a sister country to the United States and all the things we've been through. Mm. Similar issues. Hold on, we're gonna. Uh, I can't believe he walked up like that. Yeah, he's in the middle. He's like two steps from me. Like at first, I thought he was doing a standing ovation, but no, he started saying it's not your country. It's not your it's country. Not it's not your, your country. country. I'm still not gonna get over the zebra joke. Oh, that's funny. I mean, he wasn't joking. Though. He wasn't, but that was different. I've never heard Ooh. that before. But uh, yeah, let, let's 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 get at it. Let's go. I'm not left speechless a lot, but baby, this debate here, I'm left speechless. <laughs> it wasn't your country to take. It's your country. It's all of our countries. It's but acknowledge it. It's all of ours. are saying we don't belong here. Okay, no one can hear you at this point. So I'd like to actually have a conversation okay. and I'll ask for tolerance in this room, please. Tolerance. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Sinet? What I'm saying is that I don't think the problem is with people on the ground, e even the people sitting here. People who govern and politicians are determining yeah. Yeah. the success of what is happening on the ground. Right. We have rhetoric where people go on stages and say the colonists must go and, the, and we stole the land and we stole the mines. The, the Brits took the mines. Buddha never had mines. And, and we can't keep on having that rhetoric and move forward. Every time I switch on a television or I put on a radio and Julius Malema says that we don't belong here and what is happening? <laughs> it's a problem. You cannot preach reconciliation to one segment of the country and preach empowerment to the other segment. All right. There's a vast, there's a vast difference between and I agree with you. There's a vast oh difference mind. between oh, rhetoric that's, that's used to manipulate the population yes. and sway people and the truth. Ne? And I would be interested in hearing how white people process the emotional baggage of what their ancestors did. I would be interested in trying to understand what it did to white families. How much silence did white people have to cope with? How did white people build a shield around themselves to be able to deal with the system in which whiteness operated all these years? That's an emotional conversation. That's a delicate conversation. I'd be willing to do the work of trying to unravel that because right now as a black person, I'm trying to do the work of unraveling my own baggage, my own historical baggage. I think when white people start to do that work, then we'll start to begin the project of trying to understand how all of us belong to this place but you can't erase history we can't pretend the violence didn't happen we can't pretend colonialism didn't happen we can't pretend people weren't slaves we can't pretend our people are not poor 
it happened. It, it happened. I'd be willing to hear white people say, you know what? It was cuck trying to pretend that this situation was normal. But I'm not hearing white people do that work. All right. What would that All right. When you return, a poetic Oh, world. no, Jungle. lady. You got to let them talk. I need to hear this. We need to hear this. What's going on? Because, uh, man, uh, that was a very, very great question. Because, you know, when the conversation is presented, they some people do get a little frustrated. Because it's like you have to now go back into the vault and talk about something that, you know, you benefited from at one point that you're benefiting from in the long run and that you have generation after generation that can also benefit from it. How do you say no to that to mm. accept something that you, you know what I'm saying, to talk about mm. it verbally, like locally? Like. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. This a lot. This this a lot. This a lot. This painful. Mm. Mm. South Africa is a fractured mirror. A paradox of schizophrenic selves who don't talk to one another. Who coexist together but don't live with each other. And this is the time when you can become the greatest substance of your dreams unless you live in a shack and don't speak English and don't know what this poem means. Tell me how it's possible for people who walk on gold to not know how to read. Mm. South Africa is an old-fashioned mutt who knows how to sing and knows even better how to cuss. Who knows how to pray when she's about to run out of luck. Who knows how to laugh really hard when the tears have run her into a rut. Who knows that race is a farce because when the lights are off, everybody's yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of, I don't, I don't hear hope yet. Mm. I don't know about you, but I don't hear hope yet. I hear it. I hear it. Just us being here, having this conversation together, getting to a space that we need to get to as a nation, it will take a very long time. It's not child's work. For me to sit and listen to Sunet, listen to Pierre, listen to Sisonke and to Lebo and hear the various voices and digest the message that comes from them. I feel pained. I, I feel their pain. But at the same time, I feel there's hope because we're talking about it. We put a plaster on a gunshot wound in this country. That's what we did. And that needs to stop. We need to, we need to talk to each other and then come to a space of understanding. Yes, yes. Hmm. Talk. I like that. That's yeah. how you understand people. Yeah, you give them their time. perspectives. Yeah, give them time to let yeah. it out and um, really take it in. Mm -hmm. And don't be so one-sided with what you're hearing because mm -hmm. some people only take what they want to hear when they don't really acknowledge what's really being said. You know? Right, right. So, yeah. And don't just listen to respond, listen to understand. Listen and to understand. Yeah. don't silence people's experiences and try to invalidate it. Yeah, you can't invalidate what they went through or you can't uh, silence their hurt mm -hmm. because their pain is real. And if it wasn't, they wouldn't be talking about it. So you got to mm -hmm. give them a chance. All right, motivational speech. I hear you in there. You got something <laughs> there going on? Okay. Who with the EFF? Yes, I am with the EFF. Explain that to me. Well, I explain in a simple fashion that <clears throat> in this country we've got more than 70% of the nation that's living in utter poverty. And if you go into the townships and, and especially in the squatter camps and you see how our children are living, we're talking about kids. We're not talking about black, white, color. We're talking about kids. Yes. So when I look at economic freedom fighters, we are looking at changes in this country to bring it into a social system where there will be no class, where the state can take control and we can live in a society where everybody can be brought up to the same level. The, the thing of, of the rainbow nation that did not work, yeah. reconciliation can only work if we both reconcile. Mm. You cannot have both Nelson Mandela giving forgiveness for a racist group of people that oppressed black people in the apartheid era and say, let us forgive them. They don't come forward and say, yes, we accept your forgiveness. Let's reconcile with each other. They don't do that. We still have people in the audience here. 
We still have people in the audience here, like a gentleman there, when, when, when she was talking about uh, the black people being uh, more educated and can actually uh, contest for a position. I heard a comment say, yeah, let's kill them. Mm. It's those comments that makes people to be killed on farms also. Because when you undermine a black person in this country longer, they are going to kill you. I'm Myrtle yes, Vetkoe and I'm from the South African Domestic Workers Union. It's not about colour. It's not about whether I'm a coloured. It's whether I'm a human being. Yeah. And I think we need to do that. Do you know the pain of a domestic worker? Do you know what it is to be isolated in the backyard of employers? To sit there when the employer go out with their beautiful cars and I remain in the backyard, I was there in the past eight years. Mm. But one man came out and he forgive. And that time, when I was in the struggle, I did not say I was a colored. Yeah. I did not say Mandela is black. We were fighting for freedom. Yeah. Yeah. That is what we were doing. Oh no. What did you say? That's... Let's give him a hand. I did... I did... I did not classify myself as a colored. And when Comrade Mandela came out, he said there's black and there's white. And since that day I walked that path. I am black. And I am... Wow. And I am proud of it. <laughs> If we want to free ourselves, we must free ourselves from this color thing. We're not going to become free because we are better. We are oppressed even in our working place. Uh, our employers don't recognize us. We raise the children. Yeah. But you find that at the end, you dismiss, you are stealing, you, my paint is missing, my sugar is missing. <laughs> I've shared this a few times um, about my grandmother. Um, so there was some laws where um, black women could not stay at home. Um, they had to go out and work. So oh, my yeah. grandmother was a domestic worker. Yeah. And there's this funny story she always tell us, um, you know, she took care of their, she cooked, cleaned, took care of their uh, children, raised their children. And um, one of the children called her a derogatory name, just like earlier on this video. And she she told them, go look in your mama draw. What you mean? I just what? realized I can't finish the statement. What? Tell me, please. I want to know. Tell me. I can't finish that statement. Oh, my gosh. But that was her last day working. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh. That was our last day working, and okay. um, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stories, so we're gonna have to give them all up here on this channel with mm -hmm. <laughs> and Man. tell her stories. They were loving. There's a, 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 a certain amount of people which wants to create a nation of unity, and then there's us, the Boers. We don't take part in this, and we're not going to. And we're not going to go away. And we're the rightful owners of this land. <laughs> so, They're laughing. Oh, they are laughing. Where are they from? So that doesn't mean we doesn't see the sunshine over other people. Okay, if you go back in history, you would actually see that the Boers have negotiated with the tribal chiefs and the kings and we we have we have uh, he lost everybody when he said what he said before he even get to you can't say nothing else you, you kind of like just everybody yeah. was having understanding until i ain't know you see we ain't going nowhere sir that sound like like the the, the cuckoo uh that's what that sound like. The cuckoo bird. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that sound like the cuckoo. <laughs> I told y'all, y'all, some sister, y'all, sister country to the Ooh. United States. Cause, Man. Cause, sir, the boldness. What is the benefit of that mindset? That's like you. Like, what's the benefit of you? Don't Child. see nothing wrong with that. It's like you. It's like bullying a child. Taking all his candy out of his bag. And, we steal you. and then you go to the principal office and you say, 
I ain't the only one who can steal. There's more back there. You just don't know it. <laughs> and we're going to continue. And we're going to continue to take the candy out. No matter what you say. You can, you can, you can, you can suspend me. We all be back. Sir. Okay. See them as equal, and we have oh, uh, what are you doing? give them the the uh, peace. Okay. Uh, now, now carry on. We can hear you. If we want to uh, share one country, we must first accept the realities. Help me understand something. If we're gonna live in the same country, but you don't want unity. How do the realities. Help me understand something. I, I understand everything I need to see in this little corner. Yeah. <laughs> they all got the same beard. <laughs> they all they, they all look the same. They they look they mugging. I don't Why do you look so the, angry? The, the older man don't kinda look like he agree with what he's saying though. I mean I don't know, see. He's playing a middleman of two men with the same stash. Yeah. If we're going to live in the same country, but you don't want unity, how do we do it? We, we never wanted unity. No, 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 I, I, I accept what you're saying. Okay. I accept that, that's what you say. What I'm saying is, then how do we live in one country? Oh, that's very easy, okay? We can uh, li live in this country happily if we have proper borders. So. If if the Boers have their land, mm -hmm. and the Tswanas have their land, and the Zulus have their land, we do not want to mix leaf Jobek for the cosmopolitans and all this uh, type uh -huh. of... Right. Sounds like a party, though. Yeah, <laughs> properly, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then, Let me hear what my panelists have to say. No, Mr. Longer? I don't want to hear no more. Higher? Higher? Yeah, no, yeah, I think you should have jumped up also. Yes. These two, this is intimidation. Uh, I'm tired of your blood uh, colonization. Then leave. Because we have you. Six, please leave. I'm not going please because leave. you said I'm going. I don't care. Please leave. What I don't like about this image is all the men. When they need to stand, they stand for the wrong reason and they're walking out. When they should have been standing there... And, and, and doing something so, like, they should have done something totally different than exit the room. Yeah. Men are like the backbone. Like, we're supposed to be providers, protectors, you know what I'm saying? And when you have gentlemen who are obviously telling you that, don't come over here, this is going to happen if you do, and you walk out, you're showing your hand, and you're letting yeah. them know that they got they advantage. They you know won. what I'm saying? I don't understand why men can they walk won. away from, oh, we're living in some times, Lord Jesus, because look. <laughs> The man who had his hand up the whole time, I really wanted to see what he had to say. He walked out. I understand why he walked out. Well, the purpose of the debate was to talk about it, create a sense of understanding and unity. He just shut down all 30-something minutes of every ounce of progress that they were making. Like, yeah. what the? Yeah. I, I can't. And you got people walking out, so what are they thinking? You know what I'm I, saying? I, I, like, I could no not work. imagine myself being in a, a, a debate like this and in in a, somebody from the cuckoo, I ain't going to say their name, but somebody from the cuckoo stood up and said something like that. Mm. In 2023, sir. I'm just drink he, well, he, he, he messed me sitting, up. I, I lost my composure. Hmm. Oh man, I'm looking at that back wall back there in the upper left corner. <laughs> they all look tight. Chill. Okay. Everybody else. Hear that. I wouldn't have left out though. Nah, I wouldn't have walked out. Man. <laughs> First and walking. foremost, we are human. We are people. We happen to have color. And I think that is the one crucial thing we always forget. At the end of the day, we all bleed, we die, we get hungry, we hurt, we're in pain. And the issue really comes when you start comparing each other's pain, that my pain is worse than yours. And I think what's happened today, uh, we've had some very heated discussions, we've had some people leaving, and I think that's, been, that's perfect, because it means we are starting to be honest with ourselves as South Africans. So what's happening, when people are not ready to deal with the reality and the truth, they will go away. 
but at some point they're going to have to come back. And I uh, wanted to actually ask the young man over there who says that, like, you know, like there needs to be like a separate place for the Boas, the, you know, Tzuanas and all that. How do you feel if uh, your daughter decided to marry a black man? How do you feel about that? I cannot see that happen. Uh, no, I'm saying uh, if she wanted to. No, then it's her choice. Then she go off in life with her choices and she left with it. I don't uh, see you as a lesser person. I only see you as a different person than my culture. And I love my own. When you're looking at uh, the South African uh, quote of arms, it talks about diverse people unite. It is not a suggestion, it's, it's a command. It's like diverse people unite. And I think we actually forget that this is what we're supposed to do as South Africans, that we're supposed, yes, the acknowledgement of our diversity is there, but we have to unite All right. in our diversity. So Sanke, what happens is conversations about race tend to attract those who have strong views. Right? Mm. And so what happens is you are attracting people who feel a deep interest in the issue in a way that may not actually represent the norm. And I think in many ways South Africans are going about their lives, living them, deeply divided, unequal, making friends, making enemies, mm. uh, but we are in the business of living um, to a large extent very non-violently. So I will say that the thing that has concerned me the most about the conversation today was the intimidation and the edge of violence. And, and, it, and it speaks to something that we didn't put on the agenda, but I think that we should, which is gender. Because the reality is there was a very masculine intimidation style that was going on here, a, a kind of bullying. And I think that often the ways in which aggressive racism plays itself out plays themselves out far more amongst men in particular ways than amongst women. This is not to say that madams uh, are not racist. But one of the things that we also have to recognize, and this is where I insist on holding myself accountable, is that black, there are black madams mm. who treat yeah. their staff horribly. Yeah? yeah. yeah. So, so while race is an important category and an important conversation, there are moments when we have to be honest enough to check ourselves and then to transcend a racial conversation for a bigger conversation that is about class. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The reality of South Africa is what happened in the studio. The colored community is also a minority group and their rights are being ignored, in, and even in the Cape, where they were the first people there. When we did Red October, which people still criticize us for, it was about minority rights and in the Cape, the coloreds and the Malay people took part. We do not have a democracy, we have a majority rule. Small groups of people are losing their identity, they are losing their cultures. He's asking if, I'll be, uh, if he'll be happy if his daughter marries a black guy. You know what, I know very many black men will not be happy if their daughters marry a white dude. Because we should retain our cultures, we should be proud of it, we should uh, keep our languages, our, our traditions. I mean, I, I can't imagine some dude coming to my house and bringing me six cows for my daughter. <laughs> but, you know. No, it would be, it would be 50. Oh, 50 <laughs> cows. <laughs> when we return, we get the final word from our audience and our panel. This is The Big Debate. She basically sounded like she agreed with him. Yeah, she did agree with him. That's what she was saying. Um, South Africa, y'all off the chain, okay? Bruh. I can't, I can't keep even up. react no more. I'm over here like, I'm Man, reacting all right. Getting... It's not with words. And then again, they all have these professions, but they're exposing themselves too into a deeper like level of understanding. And people looking at them now be like, you know what? They not know you was on that level when you came to that thought process. Because you got to really push people beyond their boundaries to see yeah. how they feel and what they would do in certain times. And that's when you like, yeah, give them time to think about it and what they do. That's how you kind of understand them. All right, you guys, so, man, this debate is getting crazy and crazy and crazier, but everybody has their points, you know. Um, But we did come back with a new clip. This video is, like, mad long. Yes. Um, But, yeah, let's continue. I don't know it. how long we in. Two hours in? I feel like it's <laughs> been, like it been a whole day. Yeah. Real talk. <laughs> All right. I don't know, juice. When um, Desmond Tutu said the white people must be glad they're not killed, Mm. Why didn't anybody say anything? Mm. And why didn't anybody say that's racist? 
But and say, how can Tutu say that? White people not, must be glad they're not killed. Because it's true. Because it's true. <laughs> it's true. My question is based to Sune um, about the Red October. I actually don't understand why white people have tend to be rhinos that you guys are in danger. You need to accept what you have done to the country mm. and you need to sit down and allow us to heal. Okay. We, we have accepted what you guys have did. Because what is the whole point of this rainbow nation? The guy said, this is their land. This is not your land, sir. You need to wake up from wherever you're dreaming. And reality, face reality. Oh, we got more people walking out. Here's the here's thing. For us going forward, we need to substitute intolerance with love. We are mm. not a people. We are a nation of individuals. If we are a nation, we need to stop tolerating, but we need... We really need to love each other. It's interesting when I look at your country, which has only got about 11 tribes, oh, while Kenya, Kenya has about 45. Yeah. And to be able to put a nation together is quite a mammoth job. And you must admit that uh, 300 years is a long time to undo in 20 years. The question is, what are we going to do? How are we going to implement a program that is going to unravel this over a period of time? That's what As the young people, we are colorblind to begin with. Um, I have white friends, I had colored friends, I have Indian friends, I have friends from all spectrums. And when we get together, the most important thing is enjoying an, an experience of euphoria, enjoying an, an authentic experience of love, excitement, you know. We don't care if you're black, if you're white, where you come from. What's important is, is, is what's in here. What can you give me that I can use to grow as an individual? At the same time, what can I give back to you? You understand? Now, the thing that is actually happening is quite saddening for a person like me because it feels like um, the older generation is trying to resuscitate a, 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 a apartheid, which is a, a giant that is in a home. We, we, we don't, I don't believe that the Rainbow Nation project is dead. I believe it's limping. Oh, What's important yeah, yeah. is that... As, the nation, we need to come together and say, yes, fine, this is where we messed up. How can we work Definitely. together moving forward? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Accountability, powerful, just saying, this is what we messed up at. Right. That would heal a lot. And taking care of it. Change can happen. Yeah, the 100%. Rainbow Nation, just how we acknowledge the Rainbow Nation on the channel, show love to everybody, you know, try to get people um, understanding different things that we go through, learning what you guys go through, us being able to come together, have a forum, and a, a constructive and um, educative forum. And it's positive, you know? Yeah. Although some of the things we talk about are not so positive. That is good, and I feel I feel hope. Yeah, for, there's definitely for hope. South Africa. I feel like it's just still new. Yeah, there's See, definitely hope. The work was already done when we were born. Mm -hmm. We was just living that work out. We're watching their work play out. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and then they mentioned that. Um, ooh, they said a lot today. They did. And I'm trying to get it all together <laughs> before I can make my uh, statement. But yeah, they made a mention of love loving each other and i feel like that's a powerful thing love would always conquer it all but some people would still choose to love you know people from a distance because they know what right. damage has happened and mm -hmm. they don't want to get involved again right, right now i feel like another thing that was important they say that it's good to um we had accepted or they had accepted what happened by letting them come back and letting them conversate among and live mm -hmm. among them like that because mm -hmm. it's like why why no one hotter than scream whenever they said uh y'all lucky that phrase and right, i want to continue right. with um, but I think in order for other people to have a level of acceptance for the community is shattering that thought of how y'all view people in such a time when apartheid mm -hmm. was going on, how y'all yeah. view people whenever y'all wanted separation and they wanted the borders up. Like, yeah, if you shatter yeah. that thought, then you guys will open up your arms in the form of acceptance because then the jobs is going to be so much more easier to get. Mm -hmm. There won't be racism on the jobs. Mm -hmm. People won't have to worry about being spit on, discrimination. All that mm -hmm. stuff is going to disappear slowly because you're shattering that thought by accepting right. the person for who they are. Right. I think acceptance is something big. Right. Yeah. I really want to see this Rainbow Nation project really, really play out. For I know it wasn't a project. I know it's like a mission in a part of, you know, your country. But I'm saying, like, I want to see 20 years from now, from now I want to see that. 
that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. There are some people that are not simply willing to t partake in the project of creating this kind of country that we want. Mm -hmm. And as young people, which young people have spoken about here, we have to say, if those people are not willing to work towards building the kind of unity that we want in this country, then we must leave them behind. And we mm. must not be apologetic about doing that. Yeah, and I also you. want to make sure that when we leave this room, we don't take people that have been saying that they're speaking as somebody as a board or whatever, and assume that they are speaking on behalf of all Afrikaans people in this country, because yeah. then it's going to take us backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. I think people, people forget about that. Mm -hmm. I think people forget about that. Mm -hmm. Like just pushing forward whatever your mission is and not uh, and, and understanding that not everybody can come right. or go where you're going. And at some point we've all seen from all countries in um Africa that's they turn back and they go back and they help their families mm -hmm. and they help the people yeah, and they're building yeah. the community. So mm -hmm. you're not forgotten just because they moved forward. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that bitterness can die like you leave that where it's at. But Whenever people do leave, and then you see that, yeah, you gotta have that mindset. You gotta continue to push forward because what God has yeah. for you is for you, and sometimes everybody can go with you. Right, you have to do what the majority wants to do. Mm. You know, the people who don't want to get on board, they'll catch on later, mm. and if they don't catch on, it won't affect y'all. You know? Yeah, facts. That's facts. To be angry, people will continue to be intolerant for as long as there's this disparities economically, socio-economic transformation first, and then yeah. questions of, trans, uh, of reconciliation of peace will follow after justice. Thank you. When we return, the final word from our panel. All right. And welcome back to the big debate on racism. Let's get the final word now from our panel. When we talk about race and reconciliation like we do today, it often feels to me as if people invent a past that never existed. And I think that it's very important for everyone to be a little bit self-reflexive and to be honest with themselves first. And especially as a white person, maybe with, a, with just with a, a tinge of humility at the same time, to think what actually happened in the past. If we don't get to that point of acknowledging what happened in the past and the wrongs in the past, there cannot really be true reconciliation. Right. Account accountability. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not the philosophical one and then not doing the nice speeches, I'm a, a realist. And the reality <laughs> is that after 20 years, this country is in serious trouble. It's burning. And we do not have another 20 years to have nice philosophical uh, discussions about who should be giving what and apologizing for what we need to get on with it and then no um, the no don't agree with that i don't agree with that at all that's just like people telling us to forget about the slavery that happened here in the united states yes sure, we know it happens everywhere but these are our issues things that happened back then are still they're still benefiting from what happened back then those things still affects us whether we forget about it get over it or not if we get over it forget about it we're going to continue to live out our day-to-day -day lives have these programs these laws and all this stuff still in place mm -hmm. and things will never get better it will never get to a place of equity in a country don't forget about it i'm not saying continue the anger that you have towards it but i'm saying let that still that fight still be there to create changes it is very important for people to take accountability when they have wronged a person and in it in this case it's a country mm -hmm. so no don't forget about it don't get Ooh. over it talking right and yeah I, I i don't agree either i feel like because when she said south africa is burning i feel like they came from out of us out of the fire mm -hmm. right and they're processing they're progressing right. you know what i'm saying and this is a form of progress you know what i'm saying so i don't know how you can come into the atmosphere and say that we're still not moving forward yes you know? um when we reacted to the soweto uprising mm -hmm. um there were relatives of that young man who was not young man young kid when they were carrying him away and his sister yeah, yeah. was on side of him running with him. Front page, yeah. There were his relatives who came in our comment section. Yep. Thanking us for that. That is still fresh in these people's memory. Yep. Yep, 100%. 
lady that started her sentence with saying, I'm a proud, strong, Sutu woman. That's exactly what I wanted her to say. I didn't diss her culture. I said, that's your culture. Keep, keep it and look after it, but allow us ours as well. Because if in this country, I start a sentence by saying, I'm a proud Afrikaner white woman. I'm in trouble. Okay? See, it's a story behind, yeah. behind with like, it's, uh, okay. In, in one breath, she said, get over it. In another breath, she says, I'm a proud Africana woman. Mm. That would have been okay if the first statement wasn't made. You're saying, my people did this, get over it, I'm a proud proud Africana woman. I'm proud of my culture. That's that's what that, yeah. yeah, that's what that comes off as. Yeah. And and that is why people would have the problem. I, I don't think it, of course you're supposed to be proud of who you are. Yeah. But when there's no accountability and sensitivity mm -mm. to what people went through, that's the problem. She made a lot of good points in this oh, debate. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like she's not sensitive to the people. It's just, what about me? What about my culture? Yeah. I'm not saying don't, you know, be proud of your culture. I feel like we haven't really dug deep, that deep into Africana culture to learn more about the culture. Just, you know, just knowing the bad stuff, honestly. Yeah. That's all we really dug into because nobody have sent us anything to share. Um, but I just feel like she just it's a just it, it just feel what about me? What about me? You can sport your culture. Zulu people have this land, but what about me? I'm a minority. I understand that, but nah. I don't think like I don't see how people can not see. Yeah. Whenever they like, like how you do not see what's going on, it's like you put people through a whole decade and years of just traumatized pain and whatnot, and then you come out of it say, I want e e equality. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? That you can have this, but we can still have this type of energy. And it's like, huh? Yeah, it's like, like, come on, man. Like, how that work? Like, it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. don't make she sense. made a lot of good points, but she, she, she struck me with that one. Like, that that how can you not understand why there will be a problem right with saying the sentence she said before that Whew. Mm. level the struggles that we are dealing with in south africa are not singular they are global struggles people of color women have been systematically oppressed for centuries the work that we're doing today to try to break this down is is not just important work for ourselves for our continent but it's important work for the world and um, i'm grateful to have been a part of this experience south africans are very passionate we care about our country and it's evidenced by the the nature of the conversation today Uh, it feels like it's, I mean, the subject matter needs something, uh, almost like a moral figure. We don't have Mandela anymore, mm. but someone of that caliber to stand up and say, actually, we're all part of one nation. And those who want to stay behind and live in the past, fine, we will leave them behind. But at some point, they will come and join us because what the, where they live is not feasible. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite poems is by a, a woman named June Jordan, and she talks about the fact that we are the ones we have been waiting for. And I think that this idea that there are a group of exceptional people who led us to democracy, and now they're gone, and we are sort of left uh, leaderless and looking for someone to replace them is, is deeply problematic. What's clear from this conversation is that everyone is big on vision and very short on details. Mm. How is it that we are going to create this path to this wonderful future? And what you need for that, in part as leaders, of course, but I think you need um, to be thinking about it consistently and constantly. We had the TRC for five years. It wrapped up its work, it's sitting on shelves. Mm -hmm. I think we need to really think about a national initiative where it is somebody's business every single day, in schools, in churches, in communities. Yeah. Someone must be tasked with the business of 
thinking through and dealing with racism in all mm. the ways in which it affects our society. Most importantly, yes. the structural ways. Because in some ways, this conversation is a hijacking of the real issues. The real mm. issues are that people are poor, and most of the people who are poor are black. Are black. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> South Africa is divided. 20 years after apartheid, our fortunes are still determined in part by the color of our skin. Will we succeed over time to build a tolerant, multicultural society where everybody has the same chances in life? You decide. Thank you for watching The Big Debate. Hmm. And that's the end. Um, yeah. Man, I put all my comments in the video. If you guys like skip through it, make sure you watch through the full video, man. It's a lot yes. of great, great nuggets in there, great experiences. A lot of understanding that we can all take from it so yeah all right we'll probably have to cut this video up in two parts so if you're at the end of this video you didn't watch the first video go follow that video yeah um there's hope oh yeah 100 percent um multiple people sent this video in of different cultures with different ethnic groups cultures whatever um in south africa um i feel like Y'all wanted us to, y'all wanted to hear our, our commentary on it. Y'all got it. There's hope. Um, this was, this was tough. We, we already said everything we had to say. So, yeah. like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have a day with our super thanks. thanks. If you like, support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.